So I picked somebody that was way better. All right, what do we okay, got? Yeah. What do we got? Steve, Steven. I'll Steve say Carlisi, Steve. yes. I don't want to say Stefan. I'll say Steven for him. He's the, He can have my name. Uh, Decatur. Decatur? Decatur. Have you ever heard this name? This does sound it familiar. It sounds somewhat familiar. It's going to sound very familiar. Uh, what is it? Do you want to know why it sounds familiar? Yeah, I do. And just to give you an example of how badass this guy was, um, he's had five Navy ships named after him. 46 oh, wow. communities in the United States, seven counties, and an island. Wow. He, he was also on the $20 silver certificate. Whoa. Whoa. This guy. Who is he? Is a motherfucking badass. Okay. I love a badass. You're going to like it. Brian, you're going to like him a lot. Okay. All right. Decatur. Born in Maryland, 1779. He's a child of the revolution. Holy shit. First, my guy takes place in 1779 also. No fucking way. <laughs> yes. I wonder if there were buds. <laughs> 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 no, he wasn't born, but the, you'll see. So his, <laughs> his father uh, was a Commodore in the U.S. Navy, which is the senior role right above captain, but right below admiral. So it's a high, high rank. And he was in the Navy during the Revolution. This is his father. But he was exposing his son a lot He was lot exposing to himself to his son? To sailing. And to okay. his son. Yeah. <laughs> a sick man. So as his son is growing up in his teenage years, they're like, you're going to go to college. You're going to be the respectable person. And he was like, no, I want to join the Navy because he hated the universities. Mm -hmm. So that's what he did. He joined as a midshipman. He wanted to sail the seven seas. Wanted to sail like his father. In the Navy. In the Navy. <laughs> you can sail the seven seas. seas. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I believe at 19, uh, he joined the Navy as a midshipman, which is the lowest rank you could join as. Sure. It's just, you, you, he started from the bottom. Now he's here. <laughs> oh, he he actually, uh, he made it. He made it and then some. At 25 years old, only four years in, he was promoted to captain, making him the youngest captain ever in U.S. history. At to this day. Time or to this day. Oh, day. really? That makes sense. Like, that's crazy. Captain How old Navy. is he at the time? 25. That's young. Well, he's a real, Very real young. Chris Pine. Why? Because he <laughs> yeah, was like that good. Mm -hmm. He was that good. He used to ride the buggy over the cliff. Yeah, listening to Beastie, Beastie Boys. Beastie. This Eo man Beastie. played a major <laughs> role in the development of the U.S. Navy. Because every single battle he, he was in, basically, and he was in like four or five, he would win, be heroic, and be like the shining light of the Navy. He was like, look at what we've done, mm. pretty much. He was just born for the sea. He was born for it, yes. Wow. He fought in the Barbary Wars. Of course. The Quasi War and the War yep. of 1812. The Quasi War. It's not really a war. Pretty much. It's kind yeah. of a war. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Fighting the French. Teetering, yep. Um, but his victories established that the United States was actually a rising power. That's how oh, absolutely. fucking great this guy was. Because think about it, how early this Navy is. The War of 1812, it's famous for like America getting its dick kicked in on land, but winning at sea when it should be the exact reverse. Yeah, you this know? guy was kind of like <laughs> almost a driving factor of it. Okay, you know? let's, let's hear it. Well, that. by Which gum, is, it put us on the map. <laughs> uh, excellent. Well said. Well said. <laughs> so there's a lot to be said about this guy, but I'm going to do a, a quick summary of um, one of the main things that he's known for okay. and how cool it is. So he became a member of the board of the Navy commissioner, and he moved to Washington. So he was surrounded by the elites. Mm -hmm. He built a bunch of ships. He over. He is was, he from Annapolis? What's up? He's from he's Maryland. From yeah, it might be in Abbott. That's where the Navy's headquarters is. Oh, maybe. Cinepexin, Maryland. It's something with a W. Oh, oh yeah. Cinepexin. Cinepexin. Yeah. So, like, one of his good friends was James Monroe at the time. Oh, wow. So he got a doctor. He's there, man. <laughs> a bunch of upper class people. Anyway, so he's famous, at least mostly at, at this age, um, for the burning of the Philadelphia. It's a ship. It's a ship. What's it's the a Navy ship? What is it? So the Philadelphia was in a battle. Against the the tri Eagles, Tripolitan <laughs> oh, no, forces. The, the Eagle, the Philadelphia Tripoli. was fighting the Chiefs. This is in the the African front. In oh, in Tripoli. Mm -hmm. So Barbary pirates. I love Tripoli. So what happened was <laughs> the Philadelphia was trying to escape. They hit a sandbar, and as they're trying to get out, they're struggling. They can't do it. The ship gets captured with all their crew. Uh oh. Uh oh. My hoagies. Oh so no. <laughs> so Tripoli, instead of saying like, "Okay, let's burn this and kill it," they took it back to port to repair it. Because they want to use the ship. Sure. Well, they're expert pirates. Mm -hmm. St Stephen Decatur says, fuck that. I'm going to take a group of guys, mm -hmm. and we're taking the ship back. 
by hook or by crook. Real quick, yeah. why does Steve always pick like pirates, aquatic? I love naval I love, love, love sea. I love it. Yeah, maybe I'm just. What you is know, this? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's like his calling. Yeah, I'm terrified of the ocean. Are you? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why. Maybe you, like the in, sea in calls some, to him in some inverted way. You know. It's funny you say that. Like, I used to love, like, the beach and shit when I was a kid. And yeah. then as I've gotten older, it's like, I don't want to go in there. There's things in there. Yeah, there's flesh-eating bacteria. Yeah, I there's jellyfish. There's sharks. Yeah. And tentacles. The ocean sucks. Tentacle things. Ooh. Well, that's what oh, it oh, like. Oh, 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 <laughs> Thank you. Oh, by the way, before, before we miss this, uh, this little bubble tea place that we get, Yeah. Uh -huh. there was a... Young Asian girl who gave this to me, who sounded like she's from the animes. Did you notice that? Because I, I noticed she sounded up. very young. Yeah. Do you think she's doing it on purpose, or do you no. think it's a cat? No, this is a real this is voice. Real. Like yeah. she should be a voice actor for that. Because <laughs> like I, I want to go back there and tell her, like, yo, you got. I'm glad that the tentacle rape uh, fantasy. It's just one thing that really popped that into your head. Yeah. That, no. uh, you saw that young girl. <laughs> <laughs> What you did, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's, what, that's what really did it. Anyway, so Stephen Decatur, he's like, fuck this. I want 80 volunteers. Most of them are Marines. He gets them. And the, the intent is to sneak into the harbor, get the ship back. If they can't get the ship back for any reason, you got to burn it. Mm -hmm. You got to get rid of it. Can't let them have it. Can't let them have it. So there's two ships involved in this. There's the Intrepid. Uh -huh. Ah, that's a that's a big one, uh -huh. and it's supported by the USS uh, Siren or Siren. I think Siren, yeah, Siren. So the Siren's providing assistance with the assault once the stuff gets started. The Intrepid is disguised as a British merchant ship, specifically from Malta, because they took five Sicilian dudes and put them on the ship to pretend they're from Malta. Mm -hmm. And then there's one guy no, that speaks no Arabic. Difference. One of them speaks Arabic, so he could speak to the the harbor masters. Uh -huh. So what happens is as this... This was a common tactic of, of oh, the day. Yeah. Like you, you approach uh, positions in other ships with a fake flag flying. Uh -huh. And then at the last second, you pull it down and put the right one up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it Why been, bother? <laughs> because it would be considered like bad form and like horribly dishonorable if you didn't at the last second show who you really were. Right. Fuck it. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I, <laughs> win. I would be like, no, we're just going to always have this up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of with you on that. Like, who They'd call me Brian the dishonorable. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to make that he, picture. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't show any quarter, and he just sneaks up on everybody and kills them. I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah, like it, he's trying to spark fear, but he's just sparking like disgust. Yeah, you know? he sucks. Oh, he has him. no honor. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so five Sicilians on board. One of them was, hey. uh, I believe, Salvatore Catalano. It might be. Fuck. Catalano's last name. I That's think Salvatore is a paisan right there. He speaks Arabic. <laughs> so as the intrepid is going into the harbor, Catalano is saying in Arabic, listen, we we lost our anchor. It dropped. We need repairs. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, yeah, come on in. And they park right next to Philadelphia. Uh -huh. But they're too far away to board it. So like as the wind is blowing, they're slowly like trying Listing, to drift the ship. In. Yeah, it's closer and closer. And it takes like a couple of hours. But once it's near... Catalano is like, all right, everybody board. And they're all like, why is that guy? That guy just say something in English? And 60 <laughs> people jump out of the ship from mm -hmm. underneath and board them. That's and awesome. they start fighting. They are told they're only allowed to use their guns if necessary. If a gun's pulled on you, they kill 20 of so them. So it's a sword fight? It's a sword fight. They kill 20 tri uh, Tripolitan? Tripoli? Tripolit Tripolitanians. Tripolitanian Tripolitan crew mm -hmm. members. Um, only one of Steven's men is injured and it's slightly it's like minor he got like slashed in the arm with a saber so they f they, they wrecked beat their ass. they beat their ass <laughs> so now they're on the ship and they realize it can't sail it's they want to take it so bad they have the men but it can't sail the masks aren't good he's like you know what light the whole thing on fire as it goes up in flames, as you would assume, it's seen. Mm -hmm. So they make sure it's going to sink and it's up in flames. They get back on the Intrepid and they book it for the ocean because it's now dark. While they're going towards the ocean, the siren is providing artillery support. Oh, nice. So there's this big battle and they're just like hauling ass out. They make it out alive and they succeed. Wow. Yeah. Real covert operation. That's quite the tale. Oh, yeah. A British vice admiral lord said this was the most bold and daring act of the age. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a big age, too. Yeah. The Pope praised the United States Do you know after who said that. it? Hmm? Do you know who said it? The British Vice Admiral Lord? Yeah. I don't know the name. He's a little guy you may know yeah. named Horatio Nelson. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's high praise for him. <laughs> <laughs> you just looked that up? No, I knew that. <laughs> okay. Well, the Pope praised the United States after that uh, uh, against Tripoli. sticking it to the Muslims. Yep, they were like, this is, <laughs> they did more against the barbarians in that short amount of time than like England has ever done. Basically, mm -hmm. that's what he said. Wow, that's some serious shade at the English. Yeah, well, guess what? I mean, these here's, here's these pirates thing. had been in operation for s centuries at this point, and they all they do is just like raid the Spanish and French coast, kidnap people, but, and enslave them. No, <laughs> but the the um. The, it, to say the English haven't done anything, how many fucking crusades were they in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, come on, Pope. <laughs> That's just a little Catholic bias against the uh, Protestants. A there. little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so Stephen Decatur is now hailed as this amazing guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the one who did it. He gets to go back to command of the ship he was at before, his other command post, which was the ship called the Enterprise. Oh, oh shit. Da, shit. Da, da, da. <laughs> so I, I love that story. Uh, there's a ton of stories like this. He won the like gold medal of honor or something when, like that. When he went back, did he talk to his first officer about all the wild adventures they used to have <laughs> and how they were all badass and stuff? <laughs> all those explosions we had. <laughs> it was just chaos, chaos man. man. <laughs> An emotional gobbledygook. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that show stinks. <laughs> We're talking about Picard. It was a commercial for Picard, right? Yeah, they, had like, they, they spliced it into like football plays, right? It's oh, so. Oh weird. yeah, yeah, they did. Did yeah. you see that? That was the teaser for the trailer. Oh my god. Oh, that was embarrassing. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to show this that. Sunday an epic event, yeah. and we it's get, like Mahomes with off? the football, and then like. <laughs> No, because we're talking and then, about like it. Riker. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. It's like you see like a guy in a football helmet going like, "Yeah," and then you see like an explosion on the on like a ship. Because if there's one thing jocks love, it's, it's the Trek. next generation. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love eighty year old Patrick Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I we can literally spend it in not just a, an episode, but probably an entire about show this guy. on this guy. So I just wanted to say that yeah, little that great. cool thing, but I also, want to, I also want to say how he died real quick. Okay. okay. Because I think uh, you're going to laugh. Um, 10,000 people attended this man's funeral, wow. which is a lot. He died at the young age of 41. People thought he was going to be president. Was he killed in battle? He was killed in a duel. Oh, <laughs> fucking dueling, man. Mind you, <laughs> dueling was such a problem at this time Yeah, because they were losing so many naval officers, dudes. they couldn't replace them. <laughs> Yeah. So like you got we got to stop this. This the most talented stop. people in the country are this getting guy. dueled to death. If I mean, I wouldn't president. say the most talented. Maybe this guy. This Hamilton, guy was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, he should have been president this dude. Like mm -hmm. legit. Uh he was killed by James Barron in 1820. Why? James Barron did some messed up stuff during like a battle in Tripoli and he got people killed. So he was on like a 2 to 5 year suspension. And I believe Stephen said some shit about that mm -hmm. and he challenged him. He James cha challenges into a duel. Mm -hmm. Now the duel normally you take like paces and you turn. Mm -hmm. This there's a lot of was there some scumbaggery scumbaggery at work, at work here. <laughs> Who cheated, Baron? Uh, nobody cheated, um, but they were told you take eight steps back, but you're facing each other the whole time. You're not turning around. Oh, so you're back. You're up. eye to eye, wow. eye to eye. You're backing up. You aim. Three, two, one. You shoot. Normally you take eight paces. You turn. You shoot. And then that's it. And most people missed. Mm -hmm. um, besides, you know, Burr. <laughs> <laughs> but this happened. They hit each other. And uh, the oh, other guy Steve got too? hit in the leg. And the other guy got hit in, like, the chest. The other guy survived. But he was really badly wounded to the point where he was saying, like, God bless you, you know. Decorative, like they, they worshiped each other as they're going. He was, and they say bye. I and fucked up. Sadly, I he died. Shot him. <laughs> sadly, he. You're died. a good man. <laughs> That's what he said. Basically, yeah. He realized what he did. He's like, I just killed like a, he a national hero. And they, there was people who said like the navy lost its mast that day. Oh man, because uh, he would have, the, the the job he would have done if he was president would have been out of control. 
So that's uh, yeah. we don't know wow. how, he, how he was as a politician, do we? we well, he was a politics. war guy. It would have been a, a lot more focus on naval prowess. Um, yeah, probably you know? expand the navy. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. Which who knows what all that resources for the navy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, Stephen Decatur. That's, wow. that's the story. That you was pretty lot, fucking cool. Yeah, research him. He's a, a really cool person. Anytime you get to talk about the Barbary Pirates is a good day. 